or on oh, Friday. Oh, no. Well, because you can't start it now because of the API change. You can't start it until after you start the Hangout going live. Mm -hmm. So that's why I forgot. I see. Now we're good. We're good, everybody. We're good. Now we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're going to have a great show. We're going to put on a great show for you guys today. We should come out and we should hype the audience, even though it's not in person. We should we have like a hype man, man come out. <laughs> Tom Who and Veronica he? feed off your energy. So whenever they say any piece of news, applaud. <laughs> All right. You know, without the live audience, it loses something, doesn't it? It does. It's yeah. not, not quite the same. It doesn't work. Yeah. All right. Let's, let's, do, let's do a podcast. It's an let's audio a podcast. podcast. Your podcasts are catching on. Yes. The, the doyen you may have read. of nerd culture <laughs> said something about them this weekend. Mm -hmm. Here we go. A minuscule portion of the Daily Tech News show was brought to you by me. Because I went to patreon.com slash acedetect and donated a dollar a month to a podcast that I really enjoy. Won't you join me? This is the Daily Tech News for Monday, August 31st, 2015. I'm Tom Merritt. Joining me, Veronica Belmont, host of Dear Veronica and co-host of Sword and Laser. How are you doing, Veronica Belmont? I am fantastic on this fine Monday afternoon. How are you, Tom? I want to reward your bravery for being willing to be the contributor that comes in on Monday, right? Like tell, Mondays, tell Garfield hates Mondays. Lots of people hate Mondays. It's, it's not the day that a lot of people would choose to, to get rolling on, but you don't care. You look Mondays in the face and laugh. I, days have no meaning to me, Tom. As a freelancer, <laughs> it, could be, it could be Sunday morning right now. It could be Friday night. I, I, time has no meaning. She is unstuck in time. Let's uh, get to some headlines. The Verge reports Google announced today an Android Wear smartwatch app for iOS. That explains that Huawei listing we saw on Amazon last week. Mm -hmm. The app allows Android watches to work with an iPhone for notification mirroring. You'll get cards from Google Now. You can choose from multiple watch faces. There's a few native apps that work with it, not a lot. Uh, you can do some voice search and fitness tracking. The app will work with the Huawei Watch, the Asus Zen Watch 2, and the LG Watch Urbane to start with. And new watches as they are released will work with this as well. Old watches will not work with the iOS app. They say, we, we just want to make it work well going forward. I'm a little surprised there's not going to be any backwards compatibility with these watches, especially with updates. Um, I, I find that a little bit surprising, but we'll definitely talk more about that later in the show today as well. Yeah, I, I will add before we move on here, though, I get the strategy of saying that if you bought a watch before, you probably didn't buy it to work with iOS. Mm -hmm. So if it's a significant amount of work to make it backwards compatible, I guess cut your losses. I don't know. I guess so. Uh, Mark Gurman of 9to5Mac reports that the new Apple TV will have uh, deep support for gaming, including the ability to use the bundled remote as a game controller. Interesting. The remote will have built-in motion sensors, so it can be used as a steering wheel in racing games, and it will use Bluetooth instead of infrared. The Apple TV will also be compatible with past Bluetooth game controllers meant for phones. According to Gurman sources, one of the dedicated buttons on the, re on the bundled remote will activate a built-in microphone to thereby activate Siri. Oh, and then the, the invite for the September 9th announcement references Siri. Mm. So maybe the Apple TV reboot could end up being the star of the show? I know. The iPhone will always be the star of the show, right? I'm, I'm still a little skeptical about the idea of Apple and gaming. You know, beyond the the mobile platforms, um, because obviously they've had they've been a huge hit there. But it's still very hard to think of my Mac as being a gaming device. Though with my gaming PC off in the ether, I have been using my Mac to play Heroes of the Storm and, and other titles like that. But it's not it's still not the same experience for me. And all of those Android consoles that pretend to be gaming, you know, that 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 provide Android gaming have. Mm -hmm have disappointed a little bit. So it feels like, I get it on paper, Apple says we'll make uh, an app store for Apple TV. Let's say they do that. And, and app store is full of games. So we're going to make it easy to port those games over to Apple TV. Boom, you've got a game console with a big title of games. But that was the theory behind the ooh yeah and the Android consoles and it didn't really play out. So I'm not sure if it changes things with Apple. Except that the Apple TV has another purpose already which is to watch video, which it does very well. 
I really want to see how well this Bluetooth uh, controller situation works out for for effective gaming, especially mm -hmm. with if they have any kind of first-person shooters or things like that. I mean, for with the steering wheel for the racing game, it has to be pretty pretty, you know, one-to-one -one kind of motion to it can be stuff done, happening. It can right? be done. Totally can be done. There's tons of Bluetooth controllers, but I just yeah, it, it feels almost. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I'll have to, I'll have to get some hands-on time with it eventually. If, if it in fact exists. Although Mark Gurman has a good record, so I think it's likely. Uh, the Competition Commission of India has filed a report accusing Google of abusing its dominant position in that market to rig search results, according to the Economic Times. The charges come after complaints from Bharat Matrimony, uh, Consumer Unity and Trust Society, Flipkart, which is a huge e-commerce in India, Facebook... You've heard of them. They're a big social network. Microsoft, <laughs> they make software, and others. The commission accuses Google of unfairly prioritizing proprietary content and even paid links, which is the part of the complaint that I quite don't quite understand. They're like, if you pay more, your links show up more. I'm like, but isn't that the way it's supposed to work? Anyway, if found guilty, the CCI can find Google up to 10% of its income, which is be billions of dollars, Ooh. and also pursue its executives individually in court. Google has until September 10th to file its response. So not just like Europe, uh, India also, not just Europe now is what I meant to say, India also going after Google for abusing a dominant market position. And, the, and again, Google in India has a 90 plus percentage market share of search, which is why they can say, you know what, when you do, do these things, it's not just your own site, you're basically changing search for everyone in India. Well, I think we had a little uh, a little hiccup in our connection there. Oh, are you back, Veronica? I'm back. Yeah, Can okay. you you froze on my end too. I I hear you now. So go ahead and uh, for for the audio recording, start over with the Reuters report. Apologies okay. for that. Reuters reports that Ashley Madison says it is still signing up new users despite hacker leaks. Wow. Parent company Avid Life Media has said hundreds of thousands of people signed up in the last week, including 87,596 women. A statement from the company said, quote, recent media reports predicting the imminent demise of Ashley Madison are greatly exaggerated. Despite having our business and customers attacked, we are growing. So okay. I, I, I'm guilty. <laughs> I'm among those people who was saying, like, ooh, I don't know if they can survive this. But apparently, if they're, if they're telling the truth, it's been that example of there's no such thing as bad publicity, I guess. I was really hoping you were say, I'm guilty of signing up post <laughs> No, I'm not guilty. You didn't guilty say of that. I'm glad. Glad to yeah. hear that. Um, Never yeah. Once been and in tempting. fact, there's been, there's been more discussion over on Gizmodo that some of the early reports of the ratio of men to women were incorrect, that there were more women on the site, but there were actually more bots than they initially thought as well. So, still not looking great for them. I'm amazed people are still signing up. They haven't really done anything to prove that their security is going to get any better. So why would you put yourself out there like that? Well, if you're willing to risk getting caught cheating on your spouse, maybe you're just a risk taker. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and you're like, ah, well, so, so now that they've been hacked, there's less of a chance of them getting hacked in the future, right? Maybe that's, that's okay. how things work. I yeah. No. Uh, Engadget reports on a video from Klubik.com in which a marketing director from Sony said the upcoming Sony Xperia Z5 phone will be the first smartphone with a 4K screen. He said the company will release both a 5.2-inch Z5 and a 5.5-inch Z5 premium phone. The video has since been pulled down from YouTube because of a copyright claim. <laughs> sure, I'm sure it was a copyright claim. And yeah. Not a, oh crap! Claim. I want to know more about whether this is really a copyright claim because I have a big problem with the way copyright claims are used. Obviously, I, you've heard me talk about that before. Uh, but also, why, marketing director, were you out there saying these things? That, maybe it just wasn't supposed to be published yet, and he assumed it was under embargo. But mm -hmm. anyway, four K screen. If only, if only you had a wife that worked for for YouTube, that would be <laughs> my wife. Works way for, for you to make those. Is that a? Are you uh, okay? Just my making wife, sure. My wife works for YouTube. That. She does not work in the department that can do anything about content <laughs> ID. And I'll be honest, she's kind of tired of hearing me complain about it. I'm sure. You know what's, what's funny about a lot of these stories that we've been talking about today is the fact that being part of Google's legal team is either the best job or the worst job. <laughs> job like, security. Like, it's got to be a hard job no matter what. 
Yeah. But either you like that kind of thing or you're, it's a living nightmare. Uh, TechCrunch reports on the introduction of the LG Watch Urbane Lux with 23 karat gold plating and an alligator leather strap. LG will make 500 of these watches at $1,500 each. The Urbane Lux is produced in partnership with Reed's Jewelers and will be showcased at IFA in Berlin this week. I have no response to that. That's like, very luxe. I know conceptually that there are people for which $1,200 is not a lot of money. I am not one of those people. Uh, so I get that maybe like, oh, I want a gold watch. Yeah, 1200 bucks. Not that much for a 23 karat gold watch. $1,500. $1,500 still. Yes, same same more. point, right? Mm -hmm. um, but for something that you know is going to be out of date in two years, wow. Okay. Sure. Well, at least I got in on the... <laughs> They'll be able to work with iOS <laughs> at the oh, very right. least. LG Watch Your Bane is one of those. There you go. So there it makes it go. totally worth it now. So uh, you've changed my mind. I'll be buying Good. two this afternoon. You're welcome. You're hey, welcome. it's Crackdown time. Uh, T-Mobile USA CEO John Legere wrote an open letter to customers who abuse unlimited data. Uh, he is very hard on people he doesn't like, and in this case, it's some of his own customers. T-Mobile offers 7 gigabytes of tethered data a month to users who sign up for the unlimited data plan. Basically, it says you can use as much as you want on your phone, but when you're tethering it, we're going to limit. Leger says certain users are purposefully hiding their tethering activity by hacking their phones or jailbreaking uh, with something. That he says they're using up to 2 terabytes of additional tethering data. T-Mobile has identified 3,000 users that might lose their unlimited data plans if they don't change that behavior. Uh, thanks to SP Sheridan and digs a lot for the submission on the subreddit for this one. It is kind of a difficult dance for John Legere, isn't it? To say, I'm on the side of the user. I'm the uncarrier. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, my engineers tell us that we're getting some congestion problems at certain access points because of people who have tethered their phones to their entire computer system. We have to stop that. <laughs> Someday I'm terrified AT&T is going to come for me after being grandfathered into their unlimited data plan from like eight years ago or yeah. something. I don't abuse it that badly, but that is losing that would be a, a, a deeply sad thing for me. Um, but <laughs> hey, they are, they're not, are they breaking the law? Probably not. Like, I, I don't know what the ins and outs of their contract are. They're certainly breaking terms of service because it says if, they're if, hacking you're, if you're tethered, you can only get seven gigabytes. And if they're mm -hmm. jailbreaking or, or unlocking or, or whatever to get around that, then that's a problem. Yeah, fair enough. I, I will right. say though, uh, this is a sign of T-Mobile's popularity that they're having to deal with this much traffic. They should be happy having yeah. this kind of problem. They should be thrilled. People are using their service. <laughs> According to the next web, uh, Sony has a new smartwatch with a dumb display. The Wena Wrist, uh, Wena stands for Wear Electronics Naturally, it may be Wena, I want to hope it's Wena, has a traditional watch face uh, with a smart band that lets users track their activities, make NFC payments, and receive notifications from their iOS phones through vibration of LED alert light. Um, Sony says the smart band will last a week on a single charge. The base model will cost roughly $200. $187 with a premium black chronograph going for $576. The Wena Wrist will go on sale next March and is being funded on Sony's internal crowdfunding platform, First Flight, which I did not know existed until today. Yeah, they've been doing some really interesting things on First Flight where they say, we think this product will be good, but let's ensure some pre-orders by crowdfunding it and to mm -hmm. get around restrictions that Kickstarter and Indiegogo put in place. They've just been running it themselves and it's very popular in Japan Neat. To, to go and back Sony on something. They love, they love Sony. Yeah, they, 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 <laughs> that is the only market I think they could do it probably. Yeah. I don't know if they could roll this out anywhere else. Uh, Tremoloki on our subreddit pointed out a Hackaday article noting that a proposed rule from the US FCC meant to secure wireless routers could prevent third-party router software like DDWRT, for example. Oh, yeah. uh, the proposed rule requires 5 gigahertz radios in routers to allow only properly authenticated software to run. Now, the idea is to prevent people from over-modulating and using higher power than the FCC allows. Hackaday points out that since those radio chips are often part of a system on a chip that includes the CPU, this could have an unintended effect of banning open source firmware. So, before you freak out, if you're, in, if you're concerned by this, if you're an open source router firmware user or someone who believes you should have the right to modify your router software, go to the FCC's open internet comments 
and or I'm not open internet. The the comments for this router restriction proposal because it's a proposed rule and tell them what you think. Get them to change the language so that it doesn't affect open source routers. It is possible for enough people to do that if enough people respond. Ooh, that's that's nerve wracking for sure. That's I've been a big proponent of DDWRT for a long time, and that's that's scary. And it should be they should be able to write the regulation to say. As long as, you know, as long as the radio is not affected by the rewrite, the software should be okay. Okay. Fortune reports that Qualcomm's next generation Snapdragon 820 processor will use Xeroth neural networking technology to adapt to and detect security threats on phones. Snapdragon Smart Protect, as the product will be called, will use machine learning combined with information shared by security software makers through an API. Qualcomm expects consumer devices with the technology to be on the market next year. That's cool. Yeah, I'm curious how well this is going to work. Uh, it definitely is going to be good for Qualcomm in encouraging device makers to use the Snapdragon, which I, a lot of devices use the Snapdragon, but mm -hmm. you know Samsung stopped using it. They so they're they're definitely trying to make sure they don't lose market share. I wonder, I, I wonder how well it's going to work because I'm skeptical. But at the same time, there was there have been some articles recently about enterprise level security dropping antivirus because they're using this kind of machine learning to protect their networks because it's more effective than just running mm -hmm. antivirus on people's desktops. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And finally, Apple and Cisco announced a strategic partnership to optimize how networking gear works with iOS devices, as well as collaborate on products and services. Large companies and governments spent $49 billion with Cisco in its last fiscal year, and Apple would like to get a little cut of that. Uh, so you can imagine why they would want to be involved with Cisco. Like, it's a big partnership. Hey, guys. Hey. Hey, can we get in on that? Can we get in on that action? Cisco's hey. just like rolling it out. Oh, Apple's, okay. Apple wants to be involved. And Cisco wants to be involved uh, with Apple because Apple is making inroads into enterprise. They have a deal with IBM uh, to co-market mm -hmm. products and roll mm -hmm. out there as well. So yeah, the Apple is becoming an enterprise level provider of phones and tablets and, and laptops. Very sweet. It's yeah. very sweet of them to get it's together so like that. Yeah. Hey, uh, thanks to everybody who submits stories on our subreddit. Uh, I'm changing. I'm trying changing up how we do this and just not separate the stories from the subreddit from the rest of the headlines. Just kind of acknowledge a couple as, as we go along. So please get in there and vote. DailyTechNewsShow.reddit.com. Let us know what stories you'd like us to cover. And that is a look at the headlines. And in those headlines, Veronica, we had a whole lot of smartwatches because apparently that's the yeah. big theme going into IFA, the uh, trade show that's happening in Berlin later this week. Uh, Sony crowdfunding a smartwatch that doesn't have a, a digital face, uh, mm -hmm. trying to say like, well, a lot of people don't want that digital face. We can make it look prettier, but still provide some of those features. Uh, you've got Android Wear working with iOS. It's a limited feature set. It can't do everything it can do on Android because iOS doesn't allow that level of access, but they think they can provide enough that it will be compelling to people. And it seems like from all of these stories, notifications some kind of proactive alerts like Google Now or, or what Siri is going to do in iOS 9, payment possibilities, a voice search, and activity tracking or fitness tracking. Mm -hmm. seem, those, those seem to be the, the commonalities that people are saying, I would like a watch for those reasons. What are we missing? <sighs> That's yeah. a very good question. It's... <laughs> it's <laughs> You know, I'm still, I, we, I feel like every time I come on this show, we talk about the Apple Watch because it's something we have both used regularly. It's definitely become a huge part of my life. So much so, in fact, that my, my tan line is enormous right now because I just, I wear it constantly. I've got Your an Apple, Apple Watch, Watch tan. You have an Apple Watch t uh, white spot? Yeah, totally. Yeah. But, you know, I, I love the idea that, that Android devices will be able to, to work now. Maybe not on that deep level that the Apple Watch does with iOS, but at least it works very strongly with the Google apps that are installed on iOS. So anything calendar related, anything having to do with email, um, it's still going to open up in like a separate little thing. But at the same time, you're, if you're really tied into the, the Google ecosystem, that's going to be great for you. Um, it'll probably do, I would imagine, a better job than, than the Apple Watch does for a lot of those features. Um, I, you know, the, the problem for me right now is, is fitness tracking because so many of the fitness trackers either 
especially Fitbit, which is the one that I've been embedded with for the past three or four years, um, doesn't work very nicely with Apple Watch. You have to kind of do workarounds with third-party software like, uh, what is it called, Sync, Smart Sync or something like that. There are basically other applications that you install that allow you to overwrite the Apple Watch step data and replace that with Fitbit data if you're more comfortable using those metrics instead. So there's a lot of workarounds that people are doing, but I, I wish all of that was more seamless right now. And maybe we're moving towards that, um, but right now there's still a lot of, of, of problems in, in those areas. Yeah, and I found that uh, the, the month that I wore an Apple Watch, notifications... Certainly, no, no, there was no payment situation that I ran into. Mm -hmm. None of this stuff was compelling enough to make me want to keep wearing the watch. So we asked people on our subreddit, uh, what aren't we getting from smartwatches? We had a few people saying, hey, I have a Pebble and I get everything I want. Uh, and I think there is a bit of a selection bias there, which is people who buy watches and still wear them are getting what they wanted from them. That makes sense, right? Otherwise, you wouldn't still be wearing them. But some people said uh, other things that they wish they would have. And the number one was make it work without a phone. Mm. <laughs> I'm yes. not sure I agree anymore having used the Apple Watch because really? I always had my phone with me anyway. I didn't really notice situations where like, oh, I have to go get my phone now. But that seems to be what most people are like. I want to be able to buy the watch and not have to worry about my phone. And that would solve the compatibility issue, I suppose. Yeah, I'm. I'm. That's that's still probably actually my number one feature request is being able to to use the watch without having my phone uh, in range. Uh, because for for fitness, I mean, you really. I don't have a good way to carry my phone around. I don't like using those armbands. I'd rather just leave it at home or leave it in my workout bag and and continue being able to to use the other features. I mean, I know it'll still continue to track steps and and that kind of thing, but. I want it to be able to work as a, I want my email to come up if I, if I want it to. I want, you know, other data. I want to be able to check in on Swarm at my gym and not have my phone on me. And that, that the, kind the of thing one, will come in, on, in time. The one thing that I didn't like was that wearing the watch ran down my phone's battery. I would like that to not happen. Did you get, experience that a lot? I, ha I haven't really noticed that. Somewhat. And I, I've continued to, cut, to wear it. Yeah, it definitely cut my phone's battery life. Not hmm. drastically for me, but Jenny, our, our producer, she, she was running into big problems with it. Well, I think, you know, I spend so much of my day with my phone plugged in at the desk or plugged into the car that I, I, it didn't really bother me so much. Um, but I can see if you're out and about all day that it would definitely be a drain in that regard. The other uh, responses that we got were key replacement. Uh, both hotels and cars. Troy from New York was mentioning that. Uh, and I think that is one of those things it can absolutely do already. And in fact, there are some hotels already that will allow certain watches like the Apple Watch to serve as your room key. But that needs to become more widespread and that that could potentially become a killer app. Uh, some other people were mentioning health diagnostics. Burke 80 was mentioning that. T-Glass mm -hmm. uh, mentioned glucose monitoring, just, just higher level health monitoring than just fitness tracking. Uh, some people recommended better navigation. Of course, battery life is a limiting factor by okay i was just mentioning that uh in the chat room right now if the watch is on its own it has to have its own data connection and suddenly the battery is going to take a big hit i think if wearables uh whether they be watches or little trackers are going to expand and become more widespread they would have to have a number of these things come together you'd have to start seeing the benefit to your life in general to wearing them, which is what phones have done, where we mm -hmm. realize, oh, there's so many apps that I can do these different things, like navigation, like email, in addition to making calls. Uh, and 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 here's the here's the thing: what I come down to, a phone had a use already. I could text and make calls, and then the smartphone made it even better. The watch has a thing it can do: time. It's not that compelling. A lot of people don't even wear a watch because they don't care about the time that much or they use their phone. So you really have a bigger step to make to say, and the watch can do these other things for you. Yeah, well, for me now, the, the biggest issue is actually carrying around the phone because it's a giant freaking phone and it doesn't fit in my pocket. So if I just want to go for a walk, I have to bring a bag with me. And I would like to just slap on the watch and, and go about my life and 
basically have this be my communication device for the day if I wanted it to be. Um, I'm really excited for the Android Wear stuff just because the amount of different devices that are available and the different kinds of looks that you can have, they tend to be, I, I believe they tend to be on the cheaper side, comparatively speaking, or not at least not as expensive as the Apple Watch unless you're going for the Lux version, yeah, the Urbane yeah, Lux. Yeah, if you're not buying the gold one, you're right. Um, so I like that the idea that you could swap them out more easily if you had a couple of different Android watches and they were all synced up to the same device. You know, you get back to that those days where you had a different watch for a different outfit, or maybe you had a special watch for special occasions, or like a workout watch for going on hikes. Um, it opens up a lot of new opportunities when you have many different kinds of watches to choose from, and you're not just swapping bands or swapping, you know. We don't have a ton of third-party options available yet for the yeah. Apple Watch, which which may change a lot of that. I'm looking forward to uh, a Magic Leap type device that will just like unobtrusively be right here on my face, like right next to my eye, and everything that I would want a watch to do, it will just beam it right into my eye, so I don't have to wear anything, and nobody can tell I have it on. So you want you want the Warby Parker Google Glass? I, no, I don't want a set of glasses. Just a real small little thing. Just beams it right into my eye. Just like in your, embedded in your, yeah. in your forehead? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Or, That's, yeah, maybe up right soon. here in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the cranial bone, the occipital well, lobe. Yeah I'm, yeah, I'm interviewing someone who has something similar. I can't give away any spoilers on that in the near future, so okay. hopefully more on that soon. For and for, for hey, what? hey, mm, no, for yeah. stuff, for other things. for things. Don't worry about it, Tom. All right, all right, all right. We'll we'll get to the bottom of this. Yeah. Hey, our pick of the day. Let's switch to that. <laughs> Rolando has picks for people who want to manage picture photo metadata on Windows. Rolando seems to think that on Mac it's all taken care of by iPhoto, but if you're using Windows, he recommends bulk rename utility, allowing you to modify the name of a set of files in more ways than you can possibly imagine all at once. Uh, Attribute Magic Pro, allowing you to modify the file's attributes in bulk, like the date that it was modified or the picture taken date. That sounds pretty useful. And GeoSetter, allowing you to correct GPS coordinates individually or in bulk. Uh, so check those out. BRU, AMPRO, and GeoSetter. Setter, G E O S E T T E R. We'll have those names in the show notes as well. Thanks for the pick, Rolando. And you can send your picks to feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com and find my picks at dailytechnewsshow.com slash picks. Got some messages here. Uh, Russell said, on Friday's show, you were discussing the possible uses of virtual reality, and you mentioned Home Depot using it to visualize remodel projects. We've been using it to walk clients through designs for commercial office space, and it has been a very successful tool for that purpose. One of the most difficult aspects of our work is to get people who do not normally look at drawings to understand how a space will look and feel, and this tool has allowed the decision-making and design approval process to improve a great deal. They also find it really fun. There's a link hmm. below to our blog post about it at interiorarchitects.com. Uh, we'll include that in the show notes as well. I, I love I love this like idea of virtual reality so divorced from what we think. Oh, it must be entertainment. It must be gaming. And the architects are like, dude, just like having people understand what we're going to do to their office space or to their, yeah. their home. That's amazing. Uh -huh. I tried doing stuff similar to that in in Google Sketch when we were when we were moving into our new house because we wanted to figure out how the furniture would fit. Yeah. It was just a lot of work. So, yeah. And it made me think of the old days when I was using CAD for that kind of stuff or like, you know, things of of that nature like old Vizio. school. Yeah. yeah, old school tools like that back when I was in high school and we were in like tech class, tech ed. Um but I love I love the more consumer facing products like that nowadays. I, I'll be honest, when we moved into this space, it was two and a half years ago, I used graph paper. <laughs> Just Done. You know, went mm -hmm. full on old school on it. Uh, Chris noticed when he set up Google Music's Adapt Sound with his Note 5 on stock headphones that it made a lot of adjustments. And he found that odd because usually he can hear tones other can't. He's got really good hearing. And he wondered why it was acting as if he had bad hearing. So he said, as soon as I got home, I went through the Adapt Sound setup again, but this time I used a set of Westone W60 headphones, and this time Adapt Sound gave me a very high rating and didn't seem to make any adjustments. So he's going to use this to prove to his wife and others that quality headphones do make a difference. Oh, good. <laughs> That's always nice to have. Yeah, so I, I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. 
Yeah, as a way to prove your headphone value. And then Eddie from Man, It Is Really Time For All Fall To Get Here Already, Austin, Texas, says on Friday's show, you got an email about using voice-activated phrases on the show, someone complaining that we were setting off things with glee. Uh, and Eddie says, this always makes me giggle, but that's probably because I get more amusement out of people's annoyances than I should. Anyway, I wanted to write in and let you know that enabling Siri, I have had shows on Netflix and books played on Audible mistakenly happen due to a phrase that roughly resembles the trigger phrase. The mm -hmm. most noticeable one was when someone on Netflix I was watching said, they seriously, and it activated Siri. Uh, so I agree there needs to be improvement across the board, but until then, my inner 12-year-old will snicker every time I hear a trigger phrase spoken. That was happening to me all the time when I was listening to audiobooks in the car. Um, it would it would constantly trigger Siri, and it would be crazy because I'd be like, oh, and I'd have to like turn her off and like start over again, and it was a big pain in the butt. So yeah, they need the, a little improvement would go a long way there. Yeah, some there's there's some voice training I know that you can do with Android where you can say you know learn my voice and only respond to that. There needs to be more of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, that is it for this episode of the Daily Tech News Show. Thank you, folks, for watching. Thank you, Veronica Belmont. Of course. Thank you for having me, as usual. And I won't pester you to tell me about secret projects, but what about your own secret projects that people can go and look at and enjoy? I'm really excited about Dear Veronica, my weekly show on Engadget every Wednesday. Uh, we take questions about technology, social media, etiquette, fashion, Literally anything at this point. We've answered questions about dogs. We've answered questions about meditation. We've answered questions about geocaching. It's all fun. It's all good. So send in your questions to veronica at engadget.com or on Twitter using the hashtag Dear Veronica. Last week's episode was particularly good, I thought. Oh, did you? Did you? Were yeah. you a little? You may be a little biased there, but it's, I was it's okay. Well, wait, was that the one I was in? Maybe. I think I that was know. one. Of, that was the second one you were in. Mm. I think. Yeah. yeah the, two really good episodes. Two great episodes. Yeah. Classics. New classics. Uh, and don't forget, folks, if you're going to Dragon Con in Atlanta, there will not only be a live daily tech news show at 4 p.m. Eastern in, uh, I believe, the Crystal Ballroom. Uh, on Friday, but there will also be a live sword and laser with Veronica and myself interviewing Sherry Priest on Saturday. Very excited. I have so much prep to do for all the panels that I'm oh, on. I know, I, it's another big panel year for sure. Uh, so head out to that. And if you can't make it to Dragon Con, check out Alpha Geek Radio because Todd Whitehead will be streaming all of the podcasting track panels, including Sword and Laser and Daily Tech News Show at alphageekradio.com. Thanks, Thanks, Todd. Thanks to Thanks, Todd. Thanks to our patrons as well. Uh, folks who support the show make it possible for the rest of you to listen. So give them a pat on the back. Tell them thanks. Or become one of them if you're not already at dailytechnewsshow.com slash support. We have a Patreon, uh, which is the main way that the show gets funded. There's also the ability to send us PayPal if, if you don't want to do it the other way if you're, or if you just want to send a one-off. And we have a store if you're like, I actually need a mouse pad for some reason, or I would like to just have a sticker, go to dailytechnewsshow.com slash store. Our email address is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. You can give us a call 512-59-DAILY. That's 512-593-2459. Listen to the show live Monday through Friday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern at alphageekradio.com and visit our website, dailytechnewsshow.com. Back tomorrow with Patrick Beja. Talk to you then. The show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> Boom. Good show. Yeah. What should we call it? How about Enter the Snapdragon? <laughs> I love that. I That's love pretty that good. so much. Yeah. All right, we'll hear others, but okay. let's be honest. Uh, Sony's big in Japan, which, you know... Uh, <laughs> Wait, Tom you know. wants an iPhone, E-Y-E, -E, iPhone. Yeah, oh. in my eye. Mm -hmm. Got it. That's punny. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, there are a lot of Ashley Madison titles, but my, uh, my Ashley Madison title would be, are we sure all those women who signed up are actually real? It's too long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Google Legal for Life, I liked. There was another Google legal one that I thought was really funny. Um, Wena or loser. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was funny too. Uh, we have a Wena. 
we have a Wenna. Uh, there's another. I guess it was just the Google one that was Google. Google Legal for Life that I liked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of thought that was funny. Although but I, I'm not saying that I want that. Enter the Snapdragon is definitely the best. Yeah. So yeah. I'll just put that out there. No, I, and, and I'm heartened that the voting had already put it on top because yep. it is objectively the best a title. superior entry in, uh, in the history of doing <laughs> Tech News Show titles. I'm going to say it's the wow. best, but it is definitely up there. Wow. That's that's high praise. Yeah. That's super high praise. It belongs in the upper echelon of submitted titles. Um, yay. Sony's, big in, Sony's big in Japan. I didn't even <laughs> think about it as being like kind of an insult. Oh, yeah, I didn't think of it that way either. Well, you know, Sony, you're big in Japan. <laughs> yeah. That's the whole joke of the thing. It's like it's big in Japan. Yeah. Which this, which is no longer like a true statement, really, because now if it's big in Japan, it just means two years later it'll be big here. Yeah, that's the other problem. Is big in yeah. Japan actually is pretty, pretty big. Yeah. Hmm. I like their food. I like everything. Are you gonna move to Japan? I would love to. You should. No, I, I mean, I don't speak Japanese, so that would be difficult. How what better consider to learn? It yeah. Also consider it as a way to downsize. Yeah. Like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> their hotels are bigger than their apartments. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I'm making an edit. I never do this. Oh, right. You're making a collection on Product Hunt. The audio listeners will never know. They'll never know. Unless they're listening to this. <laughs> it just sounds like Veronica picked up the ball right right after I finished my headline. There's like, like boom, boom, boom. Oh, good with the edit? Yeah. Good. Mm. <clears throat> Funny. It's good times, good times. I've seen Tokyo Drift, and everyone in Japan seems to speak English. Yeah, except like two of the actors are Korean, ironically enough. Yeah, that was that was that was the other, the other. Japanese. Although there are Korean Japanese, although for historical and social reasons they don't acknowledge it. Mm-hmm. Or if you had a magazine that was titled Foreigner Crime that sold in like 7-Elevens. Now sure I want to go either. over and get Tendon from um, Mitsuo Marketplace. Mm -hmm. mm. The fried egg in tempura batter. Then you break it what? over the rice. What? Oh. How is that even done? They just drop it. How do you do that? I don't even know how they do it. But it's amazing. It's a technological amazing. marvel. Like it's an egg that's already been cracked. It's like a almost like a poached egg that is okay. then battered. Okay. Okay. And it's soft boiled. Wow. That sounds delicious. It is. Mm. It is for the win. So I'm pretty excited about Dragon Con. I feel yeah, like I'm looking I, forward to it. I've done it enough that I'm not worried that I'm not prepared. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not usually I'm kind of panicked about it, but now I'm just mm -hmm. like, all right, yeah, I got I got stuff to do. Yeah. I'm yeah, I'm I'm not nervous about anything except for the um Sherlock versus elementary panel. Oh, a lot of research. Right, because which, that's like different than what you normally do, right? Yeah, it's yeah. like outside of my normal track, and mm -hmm. I apparently I'm supposed to be speaking for Elementary, which oh. is great because I love that show, but I really love Sherlock, so I think oh, it's gonna be. Oh no, you have to play devil's advocate. Yeah, so I gotta I gotta like either rewatch some things, but I also have to prep for this talk that I'm giving the week after, and like make I have to make like a ton of slides. <laughs> 
we'll see. What is your talk the week mm. after? I can't topic? talk. About Do you it. have it assigned talk? You don't. No. Yeah, okay. I, Never mind. No. Okay. I can talk about that. I just can't say where where the talk is right. happening. Um, no, it's they just want a personal story that would be interesting to that crowd. Okay. So it's pretty pretty broad. Yeah, it can be pretty much about anything, but they say personal stories do much better. The more personal, the better. So, I tried to make it a lot more general and news-oriented, and they were like, okay, that's good, but really make it about yourself, and then the newsy stuff would be second place. Incidental. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like stuff we've talked about on this show, about like right to be forgotten and stuff like that. Yeah, so we'll see. It'll be interesting. It'll be fun. Mm -hmm. You'll get to see and hear things. Yes. <laughs> I want to say particular things, but then that would give it away. It's okay. There'll be sky and ground. Yeah. And humans. Human beings of particular types. Yeah. With yeah. names. kind of wish I was at PAX. Be honest. Uh, I'm okay with not being at PAX. Well, the fact that it's not the same weekend as Dragon Con makes me want to go. The fact that it's still the weekend before Dragon Con makes me glad mm -hmm. that I didn't. Mm -hmm. Oops. The only thing I regret not about going about PAX this year is missing out on the um, the marketing campaign for the uh, Fury Road game. Oh they, yeah. You could Uber out. Right. That's pretty cool. That was pretty awesome. Just eat. Oh, what if I'm not even up to date on elementary? Shoot. Oh, you might be like, there might be a couple episodes. It's a good reason to watch some episodes. But I don't have time to watch any episodes. I have to prepare this talk. <laughs> There's no time for anything. <laughs> and also, I like really want to start working or thinking about the anthology 2.0. Okay. Um, yeah. I've gotten really inspired on that, especially Good. with the with the uh, Inkshare stuff. Yeah, so. that'll actually help, I think. Yeah. Quite a bit. So. Yeah, we'll see. I'm thinking about doing a book on Inkshares. Oh, good. It's frightening to think of, but. No, I think it's good though. Cause, well, because the way I've always approached books was like, "Hey, I wrote this. I like it. I like it well enough." I don't mm -hmm. care if you like it or not. If you do, that's awesome. Whereas if you go on ink shares, it's like, judge me. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think it'll be okay. Dude. I think it'll be fun. I think it'll be okay. I don't know whether to do the book that's ready, because I have a book that I've been waiting for my friend who's an editor to get time to look at, mm -hmm. or do I take it away from her and give it to ink shares? Mm. Hmm. Wait, what does Inkshares do? Does it copy edit? Among other things. Like edit edit? Mm-hmm. And does cover art and guidance? blurbs and marketing. Well, yeah, but how about like working with you the way a freelance editor would just shape a book and make it good? Like, do they go to that level? Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm. Right, Veronica? What? Yeah, say it again. I was doing something. <laughs> they they do how much how much editing do they do? I know they do some. Oh yeah, they have they, you go through. They have they have editors. I believe. Like I know the um one of the books that were were is in our collection is going through the edit process right now. So I, I need to find out what levels of editing, but I know it's you work with an editor on your book for sure. Mhm. Mm and uh JF said he really enjoyed that. He just, really that's that good, process. yeah. Yeah. Looking it up. Hmm. It's pretty good. But you have to share your ideas before they're published. Mm hmm. Yes, you do. It's like Kickstarter. 
Did you um, get um did you get a copy of the Dark Forest sent to you? Nope. Not that I know of. No? Not yet. All right, I am out of the post. And we are off to the races. So thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll talk to you later. Thanks, guys.